This is Peter with 1 Peter 411 Ministries. I have a question. Does God place hidden messages in various places for His people to find? Some of you would say yes, and some of you would say no. In years past, I would have been with those of you that say no. But that was before I started my own investigation into end-time prophecies. Over the last few months, I've uncovered hidden messages that seem to speak to end-time events. Again, there are those of you that think this is false rhetoric, but the Bible tells us that only those with ears to hear shall hear the secret messages God has for His people. So, does God have hidden messages for His people to find? Let's go to the Bible and see what the Scriptures have to say. Amos 3.7 Surely the Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secret to His servants, the prophets. Proverbs 25.2 It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search them out is the honor of kings. Acts 2.17 And in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So in these three verses, we see God at work. In Amos, God tells us he will inform his servants before he does something. In Proverbs, God tells us that he enjoys hiding messages. And in Acts, God says many will see visions, dreams, and speak prophecy in the last days. With this in mind, let's move on to the crazy stuff. In 1986, there was a movie produced called Little Shop of Horrors. It was a rock comedy horror film about a genetically altered plant that fed on human blood. It is a bizarre film to say the least, but what I find most bizarre is the first four minutes of the film. At the beginning is a monologue which speaks about a coming threat to the human race. The date surely caught my attention as they call out September 23rd. Then it breaks into the intro of three ladies singing the theme song to the movie. It's a sha-la-la song with creepy lyrics. Toward the end of this clip, you'll see the flower shop owner reading a newspaper with very odd headlines. This is where there are creepy predictions and they all point to September 23rd of 2017. Listen carefully to the lyrics, and I will post them on screen. At the end of the clip, I'll go over the hidden messages. Then you can decide if all these facts are an odd coincidence, or they are a warning of coming events. So let's take a look at this movie clip. On the 23rd day of the month of September, in an early year of a decade not too long before our own, the human race suddenly encountered a deadly threat to its very existence. And this terrifying enemy surfaced, as such enemies often do, in the seemingly most innocent and unlikely of places.
All right, so let's recap and take a look at what's going on here. In the beginning, there's this real creepy message about September 23rd and something coming to destroy the human race. Then, right after that, is this weird image in the sky. I want to focus on that image for a moment. If you look closely, there appears to be a female figure in this, in this image. And I'm going to kind of outline it for you right here. If we take a look, uh, just right in this area here, it appears to be, well, to me, a female image. So I googled images of the constellation Virgo and found the artist's impression of Virgo that would have been around in 1986 and found this picture. Rotating the image, I found that it fit into this frame of the film. Okay, you may say that's a stretch, and I would probably agree if it weren't for the fact that the Revelation 12 prophecy, as presumed by many, will be fulfilled on September 23rd of this year. There's a lot more to go over, but before we leave this particular point, I want you to take a look at the face area of this frame. That is one creepy looking face, and it is awfully coincidental. All right, let's take a look at the next creepy thing. Near the end of the intro song and dance, we see the shop owner reading a newspaper. No big deal, right? Except the headline is bizarre. It reads, Unexpected Total Eclipse. There are no such things as an unexpected eclipse. NASA tells us exactly when and where they will occur. Even the ancient astronomers knew when to expect an eclipse. Now, if you are a student of the Bible, you know there was an eclipse during the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus, and it lasted for three hours. Not only does the Bible speak of it, but three other secular writers confirm it. Now this is very bizarre because the moon cannot create a three-hour eclipse. It is only capable of eclipsing the sun for seven minutes. The moon must be between the earth and the sun to do so. Now the Lord was crucified on Passover. Passover starts on the evening of the 14th day of the month of Nisan on the Hebrew calendar. The Hebrew calendar is a lunar-based calendar. The first day of each Hebrew month is a new moon, and the 14th to the 15th is always a full moon. So there was a lunar blood moon eclipse on the evening Christ was crucified. That means there is no possible way that the moon could have eclipsed the sun. In order for there to be a three-hour-long eclipse of the sun, some other large planet-like object would have had to have moved in between the sun and the earth, and it would have had to have been very large. What could do that? Well, how about the so-called Planet X, or Nibiru as it's known as? Okay, did I just lose you right there? Well, guess what? Back in 1983, NASA posted an article uh, in the Washington Post that they had discovered something out there that was approximately the size of Jupiter. It was so cold that it did not reflect light. No light was emitted from it and it was shrouded in dust. Well, this is on an elliptical orbit and it certainly could have produced a three hour long eclipse during the time of the crucifixion. So the newspaper headline is rather odd to say the least. But what is even more creepy is the time it occurs in the movie. When I reviewed the original recording, I found the newspaper scene happened at the 3 minute and 29 second mark. If you read them backwards, you get 923 or September 23rd. Now let's look at the second headline in black. Now this isn't actually a headline, it's supposed to be an ad. And what does the ad say? Well, if we look closely, we can make it out. It says, we can make you feel at home across America and in Washington, D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. So who or what? can make us feel at home across America. Well, their logo is right here in the corner. It's a bull, and it's the logo of Merrill Lynch. 
Now the logo of Merrill Lynch being the bull, the bull is also a symbol of what? Wall Street and the American economy. So this ad is saying that we here in America should feel safe and secure right at home with the strength of our money and the American economy. So does this bull of Wall Street remind you of anything biblically? Well, if you look at it, it certainly looks like a golden calf. And what was the golden calf? It was an idol that was made by Aaron and the Israelites while Moses was up on Mount Sinai retrieving the Ten Commandments. Since everything in this video revolves around September 23rd or the numbers 923, I decided to go back and look into the Bible at the time of the Exodus, the first few books of the Bible. Here we have in Exodus 923. So Moses lifted his staff towards the sky, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and lightning flashed towards the earth, and the Lord sent a tremendous hailstorm against all the land. Leviticus 923b Then the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Numbers 921 and 23 The cloud remained only from evening until morning. When the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they would journey. At the command of the Lord, they journeyed. And Deuteronomy 921 through 23 Then I, God, took your sin, the calf which you had made, and burnt it with fire, and crushed it, and ground it very small, until it was as fine as dust. And I threw its dust into the brook that descended from the mountain. Also, you provoked the Lord to wrath. Then you rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God, and you did not believe him, nor obey his voice. So these verses speak of two things. In Exodus and Deuteronomy, it speaks of a storm coming, thunder, hail, lightning. Deuteronomy speaks of the calf being destroyed, ground to dust. Uh, these two things here, I mean, as we're looking right now, while I'm recording this, we have just gone through one hurricane down in Houston. We have another one, Hurricane Irma, headed this way. So there are certainly some storms. Uh, the economy. Uh, are we about to see a, a big decline in our economy? Well, there are many economists that say we're way overdue for that. Then in Leviticus and Numbers, it speaks of the glory of God appearing to the people. It speaks of the cloud remaining and being taken up. Uh, these two verses here speak of the rapture. And if you've watched my other video about Daniel's hidden vision, you'll see that the evening and the morning is what Daniel was speaking about. And it's also speaking about that here in Numbers. So I also told you at the beginning of this video that there was something about a reference to the constellation Coma. So let's go and take a look at that as the very last thing we do. Towards the end of the intro song, the three ladies sing, look around, something's coming down. Best believe it, something's come to get you. Coma, coma, coma. Now, coma or coma is a constellation, a deacon constellation of Virgo, and it speaks of Jesus. Uh, it is an image of the Virgin holding the baby. So, the term coma, coma, coma could be interpreted as come, Lord Jesus, come. Any one of the things I've spoke about in this video by themselves seem absolutely ridiculous. But put them all together and you cannot deny that there is certainly a message there. A message of the coming rapture, uh, a message of coming destruction during the tribulation period, and it all seems to point to a certain time of the year, being September. Will this year be it? I do not know, but uh, we're just a few weeks away from finding out. If not, let's all be ready for his coming and certainly be ready at the time of the Feast of the Trumpets. God bless you all.